All right, so um, firstly, uh, okay, welcome back. We have had a break of about a week. And uh, just before we go on uh, to newer stuff, I wanted to remind you of what we did. So last time around, we were looking at free fields and NOPs. We started off with the example of the free boson and we calculated the uh, two point function uh, of phi with phi. And we saw that it went like a log of x minus y squared. That indicated that phi is not a primary field. Uh, written in terms of complex coordinates, z and z bar, uh, we saw that this could be uh, separated into a, uh, into a log of a holomorphic part and a log of an anti-holomorphic part. From this, what we could obtain is the fact that if you are looking at not phi, but del phi, then del phi with, uh, I mean del phi, the two point function went like one over z squared. Again. So one over z squared uh, is, I mean, sort of reminiscent of the fact that this could actually be, a, uh, uh, I mean, uh, quasi primary field of weight, weight one. Uh, and, uh, but, but we will look at it in a separate way as well. So for the moment, let us, let us focus on, on the holomorphic part of it. And when we do that, then what we get is del phi with del phi gives you one, one minus e squared, okay? Uh, the fact that you have, uh, you have a squared in this uh, also indicates the fact that when you exchange phi, at, I mean, del phi at z with del phi at, 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 at omega, uh, when you bring this here and bring, bring this guy here, it does not change your uh, right hand side. So this, this reflects the bosonic nature of the fields. Uh, exchanging the two fields does not uh, change what you have for the uh, two point function. Then what we did is we tried to write down what the I mean, energy momentum the tensor for this master's boson is. And we had, uh, so we had expressions of, uh, phi, I mean, uh, T of C and P bar of C bar. And uh, then, then we, we, we wanted to make sure that, that, you know, these are, these are defined at the same point. So we, we want to make sure that things don't blow up. So there is a notion of a normal ordering whereby you, uh, I mean, take out a, a piece like this. Now, uh, so, so this is what you need to keep in mind when I write, write this with these uh, two dots out here, okay? All right, now what we saw is we wanted to find out the OP with T with, I mean, uh, <laughs> del phi to, to, I mean, ensure, uh, for example, that this particular field is actually something like a primary field. This is what we will see. And for this, we did this, I mean, analysis with Wicks with, with theorem and uh, so here, uh, you know, I hope you guys have gone, gone through some of these notes before. And so what, what, has, what has happened is that in this case, what you need to do is the, for, in order to get the OP, you need to, uh, you need to keep in mind <clears throat> the fact that you have to do these I mean, weak contractions, right? And, and there are several, I mean, in, in this case, there are two separate ways, ways to do this, this and that. So if you do that, there is an extra factor of two, which you get. And the right-hand side has to be written in terms of not uh, the phi field at Z, but a phi field at, I mean, at, at, at uh, W or, or, or omega, if you wish. So in, in that case, so what you do, you need, need to expand, expand out this guy, right? So you need to expand out this guy. And that's what I've written down out here for you. Once you do that, then you write down T with, I mean, del, del phi. And then you get the form of, of uh, the, I mean, OP as, as this guy, the singular terms are given by this one over Z, there's a one over Z squared piece. So there's a one, one over Z piece. And uh, it's clear from here that, uh, you know, del phi is actually a primary field of weight one because you have, uh, this was supposed to be the thing that was multiplied by H. So that H is equal to one. And this is the usual piece that you get from, uh, I mean, as we said, the translation invariance. Okay, so uh, <coughs> that's that.
we also uh, try try to find what t of z with t of uh, t of omega is, and that when when the dust settles, uh, gave you a form like this. So not only did it have the usual, so so this was uh, a field of weight two, and this was a piece which was uh, I mean usual piece for from uh, I mean just translational invariance, but this is an extra piece that that we ended up with. So this is, I mean, this indicates that T is not a, I mean, T is not a primary field. And uh, so this is an, an operator which has weight H, uh, H, H bar is two zero, but it fails to be a primary because of this term that is sitting out here. All right. So this was, uh, this was uh, what, what we did for the free, free uh, boson. You, you can do a similar analysis for the free uh, fermion. And then again, uh, so once once you go go through the whole thing, um, once you go through the whole analysis, what you what you end up with? I'm sorry. There's a feedback from somewhere. Okay. Um, all right, moving ahead. Uh, so T, uh, I mean, in this case as well, you you have a T uh, a T of Z with uh, T of omega, and again, uh, with with the usual uh, pieces that 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 you get, there is a similar, I mean, uh, anomalous piece which is again identical to to uh, I mean it it is I mean identical in the sense that one over Z Z uh, Z minus omega all to the fourth is there. Uh, but the the number in front of the I mean the number which multiplies this has actually uh, and has actually is is not the same. It was a half before. This is one fourth now. Okay, so this uh, this sort of uh, you know leads us to to write down uh, the uh, general form of the OP of the I mean energy momentum uh, tensor with itself. So this is going to be so T of Z and T of uh, and T of omega obviously has these two pieces which we got from our uh, previous analysis. This is just because T is a field of weight H and H bar. There is also this one over Z Z minus uh, Z minus omega whole to the power four piece. We saw that the number uh, which it comes with is not the same. So we are going to denote this number by by C. The C is one of the most important things that you that you have in a CFT. The C is equal to one for the free free boson, as we saw, and equal to half for the free uh, um, free fermion. This is a model dependent constant, and it's called the central charge. You have uh, come across the word central charge before, and we will see briefly not today, but uh, in the next class that this is going to be one and the same thing. This number arises, uh, I mean, exactly in the same way, okay? As, as, I, uh, as I tried to emphasize last time, this number is one of the most important quantities that characterize a particular CFT. It's not determined by symmetry, and we have already seen that for a free, uh, um, for a free uh, scalar field, C is equal to one. So I, I should also mention here, I mean, this is something that I've not written down, but let me try and do that. Uh, if you have a similar thing with the T bars, T bar Z bar, T bar omega bar, this is going to be C bar over to uh, Z minus omega, Z, sorry, whatever, Z minus. Unfortunately, I don't have much space here. Um, look, let's write it in, in this way. And let's try and be a little short. I'll just put this guy at zero. Okay. And uh, so this is going to be C bar over two multiplying Z bar to the minus four plus twice T bar of omega of zero of, uh, and then Z bar to the minus two plus del T bar of zero Z bar to the minus one. Okay, so this is bar. So what I just wanted to uh, wanted to clarify here, 
that there is another constant C bar. There is something which is C for the T of Z and for T bar of Z bar, there's something which is C bar. These necessarily, uh, these this need not be the same, uh, but we will, uh, we will have more to say about this later, okay? Very good. So, so for the free, uh, I mean, for the free no, uh, uh, scalar field that we were dealing with, we will see that C is equal to C bar equals to one. So if we had actually N of these N non-interacting scalars, then C is going to be equal to C bar is, equal, is going to be equal to N, okay? This gives us a, a hint to the true meaning of the central charge. Central charge is actually a measure of the degrees of freedom in a CFT. We will see this more explicitly when we try and figure out what, I mean, what the entropy of, of uh, uh, these, these guys, I mean, of a CFT is, and we will see that the central charge explicitly arises there this will be a little later in the course, but I, I wanted to just give you a, a, an idea of what was happening. So this was this particular expression, uh, 3.43 is a very important one. And you should really keep this in mind that the TTOPE gives, gets this piece, which is, uh, which is multiplied by the central charge and it's uh, Z minus, uh, Z minus omega whole to the four. And there are these other usual pieces, which just reflect the fact that it has weight to zero. Very good. So now, uh, before we go on further, and we are, we would want to attempt to, uh, attempt to justify why this thing that I've written down is actually the most general form of the DTOP for arbitrary two dimensional CFT. Before I go on, let me again stop and uh, ask you guys if there is something that you want to ask me here. Um, I have a question. Yeah, please. So is it uh, always the case that C equal to C bar or? Uh... No, it is not always the case. So we will see that there are, uh, so I mean, I'm not sure how much of this we will see, but there are, I mean, anomaly, uh, I mean, uh, restrictions, or you know things like I mean things things like unitarity and 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 so on, which at times dictate what what the form of it. So there will be other at this instant uh, without any other extra I mean input into the game. Uh, C and C bar are just two of two uh, numbers which are going to give you what these are numbers which which characterize uh, I mean a, a two dimensional CFT. What, okay. what, what would happen uh, is that if you impose further things, I mean, onto it, there are going to be restrictions on what C, uh, you know, for example, C minus C bar, what that, that, that could be. And you would see that in most, most cases, we take these two numbers to be the same, but it need not be true. Okay. 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 Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Sure. So, so uh, yeah, please. Hello. Yeah. So does uh, central charge have uh, any, I mean, uh, will there be a similar concept of central charge in higher dimensions? Um, okay, similar concept of central charge, uh, at least not in the way that I, I have said it here. Okay. Uh, the thing that I'm that so 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 you see that in as 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 we have seen right as we have seen in in higher dimensions, if you are uh, if you if you were to write uh, the uh, CFT algebra, that is going to be SOD. Uh, I mean SOD two right, and we we have seen from I mean we we didn't exactly do this, but I told you that this was related to the fact that, uh, so the central charge is to do with this, uh, so, so this uh, pi two group that we had, had, had earlier. So you, what, you know, uh, if, if I just uh, take you back um, to a number of, just give me a second, let me try and see if I can get to this quickly. Uh, Let's see what we have here. Yes. 
So you remember that, I mean, we are, we are going to get, I mean, you know, we are, we're going to do this in more detail. But uh, I, I had said that there is this, this uh, central, I mean, extension I mean, that, that, that you can do, right? Of, I mean, so of the wit algebra, you, you, you would, would be able to add a piece, a piece, piece to the wit algebra that looks like this. And your, the, I mean, Virasoro algebra uh, is, is what, what is, is important. And here you have this central extension. The central extension, the C here is going to be the same thing. That's the central charge that we've just stated. I'll show you this in the next class. Uh, but the, the thing, so, so I, I mean, another thing that, that I tried to show you here was, was when you are looking, so you, you can actually relate this to the second, uh, I mean, this power molecule group H2. And for finite, so H is equal to zero for finite dimensional semi-simple Lie algebras, right? And what what you also I mean what 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 you'd also remember that this uh, I mean higher I mean higher dimensional thing is SO D two. So you would not have any extensions of this I mean this kind for and for the higher and for the higher dimensions. Okay. Okay. So that's that's one one sort of quick way to see it. But if you add in things like supersymmetry and so on, there, that would, I mean, there would be more, more things in the game. And uh, so we can discuss those afterwards. Uh, I mean, if we, if we uh, get, get to a point where I can say a little bit about uh, supersymmetry, I'll try and uh, give you guys a brief flavor of what, what similar things might be happening there. Okay. All right. Okay, now to figure out where we were, I think we were here. Yeah. <clears throat> so that's a uh, central charge. We'll have more to say about it, but for the moment, let's, you know, let's try and uh, justify why this, uh, this particular, uh, you know, OP, the TTOP, why is this the most uh, general form that you can have for it? Uh, we, we have looked at examples and seen that this is the case, but let's try try to work a little bit more. Okay. Uh, from our examples, we've seen that T is an operator of weight uh, H H bar is equal to two zero. This remains actually true for all CFTs. Okay. This is because what, uh, if you look at uh, uh, T alpha beta, this has, uh, I mean, this has uh, dimensions two. This is just because this is the uh, energy that we get, get, get by integrating over space. Right? Now it, it, it also has spin equal to two because it is a symmetric, uh, I mean, symmetric two, two tensor. So this, this particular, these, these two things are just equivalent to saying that T has a weight two zero and T bar has a weight zero two. So you remember that Delta, so, uh, Delta was H plus H bar and S was H minus H bar. We have, uh, so yes, so that's, that's, uh, that's what, so you, you have, uh, I mean, Delta equal to two and S equal to two. So, uh, so that, that is, what, that is what is going to happen. So you will, you will, uh, you would be able to translate this into uh, the fact that uh, T has a weight two two zero and T bar has a weight zero two. Okay. All right. So uh, so this in turn means that uh, the TT or OP has to have a form form like this, right? So this is what 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 we have seen seen from earlier. So this part just comes from a, I mean translational invariance. And this is this factor of two is there because this has weight weight two. Similarly for I mean uh, t bar, but question is what are the other terms that you could have in this expansion? Look at these these terms. So each term, if you if you look at the weight of each term, the weight of each term, uh, so the delta of each term is equal to four. 
how is how is that that the case? So you see there is uh, a z z minus z minus omega squared downstairs. So if you if you translate it to you know the weights weights that we are uh, speaking about the the, the, the dimensions. The, so that's that's the so length is 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 going to be the in, inverse mass dimension. So here you you you'll have a weight weight two that comes from this object, and there is a weight weight two that I mean also comes from the fact that t has weight two, right? So the left hand side obviously there are two t's, so everything has uh, so so you know this has weight two, this has weight two, the whole object will have weight weight four. So everything on the right hand side should have weight four. Just just to I mean check this with with this last term. T has weight weight two, uh, z z z minus uh, z minus omega has has weight uh, minus one, so one over z minus omega has weight one, and there's this del as well, right? So the del will also give you a ma mass dimension which is one. So that's so that's plus one, that's plus two, and this guy uh, gives you uh, the last uh, last bit. So this is also weight four. So everything will have to have weight four. Everything on, on the right hand side has to have weight four and it'll have a form like this, right? It'll have a form which is, which is like this. Okay. Now I cannot see my... This guy has a weight N. So I mean, delta of O N has to have weight four minus N. We will see, uh, this is not, not, not something that we have proved yet. In, uh, in unitary CFT, there are no operators with H and H bar, which is less than, less than zero. So uh, if this, this can't be less than zero, the most non-singular term that, that we can have is weight Z, Z minus omega whole to the four, okay? And that term has to be multiplied by something. So the I mean operator that it has has to sort of uh, come with has to, has to have a weight weight zero, or or in this 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 case, so this has to be multiplied by some I mean, some sort of number, right? Because when you're expanding the, these 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 t's, the right hand side can only have expressions which are are like you know something off of t's. So, so we can't clearly, I mean, clearly we can't make something else with it. So the num, I mean, you know, so what, what we have to have is this has to, this one over Z minus omega whole to the power four term has to come multiplied by some number. So this is what, you know, this is how we sort of justify the fact that equation 3.43 is the most uh, general term that you can write. Okay, I hope this was, um, this was clear. Um, if not, again, you are most uh, welcome to ask me things. Uh, before doing that, is there any obvious question that you guys have? Is there any obvious term that I'm actually dropping? So does anybody have an answer? Is there one any... over Z cubed is dropped because like that is not like that won't respect this bosonic symmetry. Um, uh, this interchange between like if, if you have some so, one over. Uh, so, so you have a, a one over Z minus omega piece, right? Yeah. Does that no, you one omega, omega power three, like one, one over z power yeah, z minus yeah. so, omega so power three. That is neglected because, like, the, you have this bosonic. Uh, so this is a bosonic field, right? So you should that should have the bosonic symmetry under exchange. Under under a similar thing, won't won't you ex won't you expand all the odd? I mean, I mean, all the odd parts to also go off. Right, right. Then. Uh, what, what what happens to one over z minus omega in that case? Uh, I think if you include uh, z minus w to the I mean the cubic term, yeah. then there is no operator 
to insert in the numerator that can take care of it okay so so you both are sort of in the right uh, i mean right direction uh, shivam not quite so uh, but well well you 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 could you could maybe argue uh, in the same spirit but but uh, but you know so uh, you can always increase the things right you can always i mean have uh, dimensions which are more i guess uh, you could maybe say say something like uh yeah so you you want something which has a weight one right so maybe you are right so so i i i'll i'll uh, i mean give give an argument which is similar to what uh pradesh has just said uh but somebody else had had something else to say so it has this got to do with uh, the unitarity bounds of uh, the delta um uh, not quite so let me try and try and explain this okay uh, so protex was in the right right uh, i mean right, right right direction uh so it's so 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 we want to want to clarify why there is no z z minus uh, omega cube term the reason as 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 we are saying is t of z and uh, t of omega is t of uh, i mean omega uh, t of z because these things as we explained before these are inside i mean inserted inside these i mean operator equations right so so these will be i mean sort of uh, time ordered and it does not does not have the, so 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 we 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 need so this is something that 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 goes through now the quick answer as as was was being said is that a z minus z minus omega cube term is not going to be invariant under z z going z going to omega but the thing that i was asking is that why does one over z uh, z actually satisfy the same uh, same thing so let's look at this so if we were to look at t of omega t of z so the z minus uh, z minus omega whole to the power four term stays the same z minus uh, uh, z minus omega whole squared term stays the same and here we have just interchanged these two right so that's that's what we have done now let's expand okay t of z is t of uh, t of omega z minus omega del t plus 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 dot dot and when when you're looking at uh, t of uh, i mean del del p of z we will we will just just go up to this so t of z z minus uh, t of omega t of z we need to expand out this guy right so we we write this and we write this extra term as well and there is this this piece where where i have now changed the sign here now when you when you write this down what happens is that there is a factor of 2 here there is no 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 factor of 2 uh, here so at the end of the day what you get is just c over 2 z minus uh, omega whole to the 4 plus twice t of omega z minus omega squared plus del t of omega this is horrible so let me try and just write this down this is the usual thing right so from from here from these these two terms this just gives you del t of omega z minus omega with a plus sign right so now what what you have shown is t of z with uh, t of omega is equal to t of i mean t of omega with t of z this is because you you have expanded out this guy so if you have a similar term uh, where where uh, where you have uh, i mean z and z, z minus omega whole uh, whole cube term similar sort of taylor expansion will not save you there okay so this is why this linear term is fine in in this case but a cubic term will will not be okay so that's uh that's uh 
And one way to see why this is allowed and that is not. And maybe as was, was being said, as uh, Shivam was saying, there's also not a very natural thing that you can write down on, on uh, the right hand side, which has, uh, I mean, something with, uh, I mean, I mean, some, 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 some T on it. Uh, but 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 you see, at the end of the day, it may be. I mean, it. it so you are you are going to also sum over all. I mean, sorts of operators, right? So the OP, in a sense, gives you all all sort. I mean, all sorts of operators on the. I mean, on the right hand side. So maybe that argument is not a very uh, very you know uh, full uh, foolproof argument. If you if you were to think of some some sort of a CFT. Then, then the uh, then you know if you have if you have some uh, so let let me remind you of what exactly the OP was if I can. OPs and word identities. Well, maybe here. Yeah. So here. I mean, I would just try to point out that what you have here, this guy has to be something which, which can be the sum over all the particular operators in a CFT. So it's not, I mean, though we are saying that the TTOP has a certain form, you could, I mean, envision that it could have some extra pieces where O has, has, you know, I mean, O has a, I mean, O has a dimension one and so on, but it's ruled out by, by, by this, by, by the arguments that I just gave. Okay. Hopefully this is, this is reasonably clear. And if it is, uh, I will move ahead. Sir. Yes, please. Uh, sir, why does uh, scaling dimension equal zero imply that the uh, operator must be identity? Uh, uh, you, you argued that, yeah, true. You okay. argued that the operator above z minus omega yes. to the four should be. Identity. Yes, um, you could have something with scaling dimension zero multiplying it, I guess. Um, but one of the specific operators with scaling, uh, I mean, scaling dimension zero is going to, is going to be, is going to be the identity, right? Yeah. So, uh, yes, you, I, I think you have a point there. Um, but yeah. Okay. So that's, 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 that's a good, good thing to sort of point out, but we will see, I mean, you know, at the end of the day, the proof of the, I mean, proof of the pudding will be in the eating. And we will see that, 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 you know, this, this particular OP is also something that, that you also, uh, you know, sort of fits in with, with what, what the, I mean, what the algebra is that we're trying, that, that we were saying before. So these, okay. uh, I mean, the, uh, the Russell algebra and everything is actually I mean, reproduced by, by this particular OP. So uh, that Good. is a point and I will try and, so I don't have a very quick argument for whether or not, why I do not have any operators of dimension zero, except for saying that there's something, I mean, the identity will be an operator. So you, you want something, okay, so, uh, so you want this this to be true for any CFT, right? You want this to be true for any CFT, and for that, uh, one particular thing, one particular operator of, I mean, dimension zero that is there in all CFTs, I mean, is uh, I mean, is going to be yeah, is going to be the identity. So that's a way to and that's a way to argue about it. So yeah, if I have a better argument, I'll try and then see. Uh, yeah. like uh, so, like you can you can also ask whether uh, are operators of dimension zero always scalar fields or do you have other examples of that as well? Because we saw that scalar field is not uh, a primary operator, right? Yeah, it's not a yes. That is right. That is right. 
So, no, I mean, what, what I'm trying to say is, for example, if you have a fermionic, uh, I mean, fermionic theory, yeah, there, for example, you have these sides which are going to have a weight half. Right, right. And then, even there, what, what you want to do is you're trying to say that, you know, you're uh, there, you'll always have the uh, 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 TTOP even there, right? But clearly, that particular CFT does not have any sort of, I mean, any sort of operators which has a I mean, weight, weight, weight zero. Right. Except for, except for, except for the identity. So, so you sort of return to, to the fact that, you know, if you were to have, if your TTOP is supposed to be something which is universal, then it has to have a form, form like this, right? So that's, that's uh, what. So we will see more ways to try, I mean, try and justify this, but try and, I mean, keep this in mind. Okay. Uh, sir, yeah. I have an argument. Okay. So like from the unitarity bound, we always know that delta have to be uh, greater than equal to zero. Okay. So that's one thing. And mm -hmm. then we see that the primaries, I mean, mm -hmm. the lowest operator in the theory has to be primary mm -hmm. because all the descendants can be generated from that. Right. Okay. So that zero, I mean, by unitarity bound, that zero operator field has to be one primary field. Okay. And now if we use that scaling argument, like phi of uh, lambda z mm -hmm. equals to phi z, okay. uh, we get that. And only way to satisfy this is to have a constant. Okay. So phi of lambda z equals to phi z. Uh, for the any only, z and the lambda. only thing is The only thing is that, for example, if you were looking at the scalar field, yeah. Uh, which where, so it where, has to be scalar. No, what I mean, uh, what I'm saying that if you're looking at the phi, for example, yeah, phi has a weight zero, right? Yes. It's not a. I mean, it's not a primary field, but it has weight. Uh, I mean, it has weight zero. Yeah. Okay. So yeah. that is the only thing that I'm saying that 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 you know, if if you were to try and say that you know these OPs. Uh, you know, the phi, phi, the phi piece, I mean, uh, when you're looking at these, uh, I mean, just, uh, uh, I, I, I mean, uh, scalar field. Uh, I mean, obviously by explicit way of trying to write these things down, we have seen that that is actually ruled out. And there is, I mean, there's just, a, I mean, there's just a number which is, uh, which, which would, would be associated with it. But, you know, why not have something which is just phi out there? I mean, is, is there an argument which rules out phi, except for, you know, just, just, just by doing things, doing things explicitly, is, is there a way that you can rule out phi? So if I, if I were to say that, you know, something like, like this. So T of Z, T of Omega is like phi of phi of omega z minus omega out of the four plus twice t omega z minus omega squared plus del t z minus omega. Are you are you able to rule this out? I mean, there has to be a sort of, uh, I mean, more clear argument of why, why, why this is so. Uh, I just don't seem to have it at the moment. I mean, obviously there are n number of things which will go wrong and you can obviously, you know, do it by explicitly, uh, you know, doing the free field example and seeing that this is not the case. Uh, but I, uh, I mean, just on uh, dimensional reasons, I can't rule this out at the moment. If somebody else has a has an answer, I would be, I mean, happy to actually try to uh, see if we can argue in that way. Does anybody else have an answer? Sir, uh, will yeah. this be explained away by some other means? This, uh, I mean, this will be form. Or yeah, this, so what, we what, what we will do, what we will do is that we will see that if you start off with, with this uh, particular OPE, 
then okay. we we can i mean we have another way of rederiving what are i mean what 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 for example a symmetry algorithm is okay right so that's 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 another way of i mean rearguing the same same things we will be rearguing things in, in in different ways if you wish so okay. so in a way the, uh, and and you can do you can take any known cft and you can find out i mean explicitly you can take the, i mean take the lagrangians and and, and so on and find out what uh, tt is for that and you 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 will see that this is always a form so there are more more ways uh, and ways to do that and i and i guess so the fact that this particular thing has to be universal is also uh, i mean so so you know uh, t is an operator that is always there in any cft any field theory is is i mean always going to have i mean have a t operator so the tt the ttop has to be something that is universal across all of these guys so at the end of the day the only sort of uh, universal uh, you know uh, zero dimensional operator that you can have is i mean for all cfts is i mean going to be identity so that's that's one one more way of i mean trying to argue the same thing and also uh, like uh... Uh, this this central charge is also the central charge which appears in this virasor algebra right yeah yeah that, that, must that be is what i was saying yeah derive this is, from the yes 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 we will see that so that, that is what i was also saying that you you can use the ttop to actually uh, derive what what, what the virasor algebra uh, virasor algebra is right, so that right. that's that's something we uh, we will do in the next class so i mean of course this is right but but yeah so just yeah i was uh, i think uh, i mean you know this this was a good i mean good good point because we were trying to yeah, justify the form of of the op and uh so the thing thing that that was pointed out is the 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 term that 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 multiplies this has to be a, a, a constant is not something which is entirely right uh, it's it's something that has to have uh, has to be an an, an operator whose dimension is equal to zero and you know the i mean identity field is is uh, one one such thing and that that means it's 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 just a number uh but but okay there, there there has to be a more clear way of trying trying to trying to argue this i if i'll i'll see if i can sort of uh, justify this uh, this a little better next time around um but there are more ways of trying trying to argue this as well so we will uh, we will go ahead and do that as well all right so 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 we have clarified why there is not going to be a z minus uh, i mean omega cube term and uh, then what we are going to do is we are going to uh look at the transformation of of uh, i mean of of t so as we said before uh, t is not a primary unless i mean of course the central charge is equal to zero so the question is what does this mean for the uh, i mean conformal transformation of t now remember uh, the change of this guy is always going to be given by the residue of uh, t of z, uh, e of z into uh, T of Z, so that's the J, with 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 the operator, which in this case of is uh, T of omega. So you look at the expression like this. Uh, you look at the uh, T T O P, and you figure out what this is. Remember that what you need to do is you need to you need to evaluate this at Z. Uh, I mean, not at Z, but at I mean, you need to expand this guy out as well, right? so what do you do you uh, you expand it so e of z if this does not have any singular terms we can expand it as e of o omega plus de del del omega uh, del uh, del omega e into z minus omega plus uh, the second derivative term into z z squared plus the third derivative term into z cube so you take all of these guys plug this here multiply it with 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 the op and extract out 
the one over z piece, right? That is what, what we are going to do. So what happens? So let's, let's do this. So this multiplied by uh, C over two Z minus Omega to the fourth plus twice T divided by Z minus Omega squared plus del T by Z minus Omega. This is to be multiplied with this, this whole guy, right? So uh, one over Z minus Omega to the fourth and we need a one over Z, right? So then this has to be multiplied with this guy, right? So that, that gives you a, so that, that gives you this term. So there's a C, C over two here and there's a one sixth here. This gives you a, a C over 12 piece here and that has to go with a, a, the th third, third derivative. Um, now this, the next thing is there has, there is a Z minus, uh, Z minus omega squared term. And this has to be multiplied by this guy because I want again a one over Z term. So this has a two in front of it. So what you're going to get is two into epsilon prime into T. And at the end of the day, there is going to be a linear term, which is just, I mean, epsilon into del, del T. So that is, that's the last term here. So we find that the change is the infinitesimal change is this term, okay? Very good. So let me try and get rid of stuff, give me a second. Okay, so this, if you wish, is the infinitesimal transformation of the energy momentum tensor under uh, conformal transformations, okay? Yeah. The finite version of this is something that I've boxed out here. And uh, so this is, so when Z goes to, when, Z goes, Z goes, uh, Z goes to omega. Uh, you are going going to get that t t of Z goes to t prime of, of uh, t prime of, of omega, and uh, t prime is of a form like this. Uh, as you see, if this this guy was not there, this would be the usual sort of transformation rules that's uh, given just just by the first half of it. And there's a central term here, and there is this weird sort of uh, second bracket. This is called the Schwarzian, okay? What is the Schwarzian? The Schwarzian of uh, omega with Z is this guy here. So this involves uh, a th third derivative, as you would expect from here. Uh, th there is also a second derivative, so, so a third, third derivative by a, by a first derivative and a second derivative by a first derivative whole squared with a factor of three over two. So I, I leave it to you as an exercise uh, to check that the Schwarzian, you can expand out the Schwarzian here uh, and you you can check that you know the infinitesimal version of uh, 3.45 act, I mean actually yields what we had got earlier. To get from here here to here is a little more yeah, non-trivial, but but I at least want you to check that if you start off here, you can get here in a very simple way. Another thing that that one one can uh, reasonably simply check is that the group property holds as in the, as in, uh, you know, two successive Schwarzians uh, yields another Schwarzian, okay? So this it was, was to be expected because uh, you, you know that two successive uh, conformal transformations yields, yields, I mean, yields another conformal uh, transformation. So uh, a similar thing on, on the, 
on the you know two two successive conformal transformations on on the the, uh, the energy momentum tensor should also close to form form uh, you know a single uh, uh, sort of conformal transformation on 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 the energy momentum tensor that means that the schwarzian also has to close so this has to have a group i mean group property at the end of the day and you you can check this is going to be there as an exercise for you guys uh, you would be able to check that this does close okay finally uh, you would also uh, you would also remember that you know the central charge piece is going to be something that only arises from uh, you know the when you're looking at a global part part of the algebra uh, there is no central piece right so if you were to look at something uh, you know which is just and uh, i mean sl2 uh, I mean, SL two Z transformation. Then you'd expect that the Schwarzian will will just drop out, and this is again something that you can check. That you, if you have uh, this particular uh, transformation, where where that, you know uh, omega goes to A Z plus B by C Z plus D, this actually vanishes uh, when when uh, the Schwarzian for this is actually going to give you uh, zero. At, at the end of the day. Okay, so this indicates that uh, you know uh, T of Z is indeed uh, uh, quasi-primary, as you would expect, because under uh, global uh, transformations, it's going to just uh, you know transform as uh, I mean just the usual uh, quasi-primary field of weight two. Okay. Very good. So that was that was that for the Schwarzian. And um, how am I doing on time? Two fifty four. Not very good. Finally, I was uh, I wanted to uh, you know do something else before I end it for the day. Okay, another point uh, pointer towards the direction that T is a quasi primary field is if you look at these. Uh, Two point functions, you'll see that this goes as uh, one over z to the four, and you know uh, your quasi primary is also so that's the uh, nature of two point functions of any uh, quasi primary field, right? Because it 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 should go as I mean z z to the power something. Before we go on to other things, and there was a question regarding. Uh, yeah, so so I am not doing very well on uh, time today, but uh, let's. I mean, it was good to have a few more uh, questions and uh, interact a bit more. So um, you know, one of the things that I think Pratek asked asked me a, f a few days yeah, back yeah. was the fact that what are you going to do if there were more singularities? So I thought just just thought I should clarify this uh, once and for all. So, for example, if you if you had this uh, singularity, so, so if you had uh, you know not one singularity but n of them around the same same point, so we we wanted to look at the word identity. So this was our word identity, and a t of uh, I mean epsilon uh, and uh, epsilon z t of z into all of these files now. Now, uh, so you can break this up into, uh, you know, if you have a, a contour like this, you can, um, uh, yeah, you can sort of deform this, as you guys know, know, know very well, into this, what, what, what I have written here, and you go on making these lines closer and closer to each other. And at the end of the day, you find that this is is uh, goes goes to an equivalent thing where you are going to take the uh, I mean take the integrals around each of these singular points, right? This is uh, something that you know from uh, your uh, uh, complex analysis uh, classes before. So uh, what do you have? You have the word identity, which now splits into n such n such guys. Where you are looking at at these, uh, you know, at these CIs, which which sort of encircle each point, and you have the T 
t with the phi i at these points. Now, what do you do? Uh, you apply the OPE here. So what, what is gonna happen is that, so you uh, so once you apply the OPE, so it's just, uh, I mean, HI, so, so you know, the T, ooh, okay, let me try and write this down, T of Z with phi omega, as you know, is uh, H into phi of omega by Z minus omega squared plus del phi of omega into z minus omega, right? So now what we have done is in this, in this uh, next line, we have uh, plugged in, in, in the OPE. And you know, this is, a, I mean, omega i, so this only acts on the phi i. And now I have summed over all of the i's, okay? So all I've done is now, so the word identity I, I had has gone into something like this, okay? So each of the, these guys, so there's a sum on each time. So what, what you have, so this equation, this equation above has to hold for all E of Z of the form Z, Z to the power N plus one. So the integrant, you know, it's not, not only true, true that the integral should, I mean, integral should vanish, the integrand should also vanish. So essentially what I'm doing is I'm trying to put this whole thing, um, if you wish, inside. Uh, so just, just sort of move, move this guy on this side. And then you, you, you see that the integral is going to be equal to zero. And for some reason, I have messed up one thing here. So let me rectify that. Okay. So what you get is the operator form that I've written as 3.46, uh, 47, I'm sorry. So you see that the word identity, the, I mean, conformal word identity is now given by this last box equation. So this is what, what we have. So when, when you have, when you have these, uh, you know, when you have a T, I mean, inserted in the, in, in, in the endpoint uh, function of some, some phi's, then what, what, what happens is that you need to sum over all the ends and for each of them when when z nears each of them you are you're going to get uh, i mean a piece like like this which which factors out this is what the word identity is okay so this is this is the uh, this is the i mean expression for for uh, the the word identity when you have instead of one you have these n sets sets of operators I mean, and uh, and of these singular points. Okay, so very good. And uh, before I go on, let me erase the part that I don't need. Okay, so today finally uh, we are already at the hour mark. Um, do I want to do this? Maybe let me just just do this and finish. I wanted to say a little bit more about the central charge. Um, I wanted to point out that the uh, TTOP does not, uh, I mean, at least, uh, so, so the one over Z, Z, Z to the power four term in the TTOP does not depend on T itself. In particular, it will be the same uh, evaluated on all states. So it only affects the, uh, so it only affects the constant term or zero mode in, I mean, in, 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 in the energy. So this is going to be related to the, I mean, Casimir energy of the system. So let's, let's just see this a little more clearly, okay? So for this, now we are going to look at the Euclidean uh, cylinder that I have uh, drawn here for you. The Euclidean cylinder is actually going to be extremely important for us going forward. So we can make a transformation from the cylinder to the plane by looking at uh, z is equal to e to the power i, z is equal to e to the power i, I, I omega. 
This means that if you know the CFT on the plane, we also understand it on the cylinder and, and, and I mean also the, the, the other way around. And the another, another important thing to notice out here is that the constant slices on the cylinder are circles of equal radius on the plane. So these guys that I've written here, drawn out here, so you can slice them up in this way. And you would be able to see that the map actually takes you to things like this. So, you know, this, so as you go further and further into the past, your circles become smaller and smaller. So actually what happens to you, I mean, you know, here X not equal to minus infinity actually maps to maps, maps to the origin. And as you move in, the circles uh, become sort of larger. And that's, that's, that's what this map gives you. So it's sort of, you know, uh, you know, you take this uh, cylinder and sort of explode it on, on the plane in some way. All right, so uh, that, that's, that's what happens. Uh, so it, as, as I said, the z equal to zero on the plane goes to x not equal to minus infinity. So what happens to t under this uh, transformation? So, uh, you know, so I told you the Schwarzian was something that, that looks, looks, like, looks like this, right? So what you need, need to do is you need to figure out, you know, when, when you are going to uh, have z is equal to e to the i omega, uh, what the Schwarzian is. And this again is something that I leave as an exercise for you. And this is very straightforward. And what you will find is the following. Uh, what you will find is that the Schwarzian is equal to half, okay? The Schwarzian is equal to half. And so what happens is the cylinder, uh, the T on the cylinder is related to the T on the plane um, by the usual Z squared factor, but there's also a central charge by 24. Now, suppose we are looking at a theory, uh, which is defined on the plane, uh, where the ground state energy vanishes. So the T plane, the one point function on, on the plane is equal to zero. We want to look at the Hamiltonian. So the Hamiltonian is what? The Hamiltonian is T naught naught, and it's the integral, right? And you're in a, I mean, two, two dimensional, uh, uh, system. So it's just, just, just going to be the integral on the x1. And remember the x1 is something that, that goes from is 0 to, to pi. So all, all you get is, uh, so, so, so it's, if you write, write this in terms of, I mean, uh, t, and, uh, t and t bar. So it's simply uh, t of, a, I mean, omega, omega bar and t bar of uh, T bar of omega bar omega bar, and uh, so the transformation that is that is going to happen. So what what you're going to do is that if you if you just plug this in, if you take the I mean expectation, I mean if you take if you take take the expectation value. So uh, what what you find? So okay, let's let's just do this. This is a little quick. So mm, T cylinder, whatever this is. Uh, T cylinder of omega is z squared minus z squared T plane of z plus C over 24. And you take the expectation value of these guys. So this is this, and this is the expectation value of one. So this actually goes to zero so what, what you're left off with is that this is this becomes C over 24. Now also you need to uh, need, need to remember that uh, H is going to be integral of D sigma. So sigma runs from zero to two pi into, uh, into this uh, T if you wish, uh, T plus T bar, oh, I don't have space. T plus T bar. So uh, expectation value. So E. So E is going to be equivalent. So E is going to be, you know, uh, two pi into 
t plus t bar. So this is going to be just, this is going to be two pi times c over 24 plus c bar over 24. And you see, this is what I have here. This is what, what, what I've written down for you here. This is going to be, uh, so there is a minus sign, which I missed, I'm sorry. There's a sign which I missed. So when, so, so you know, this, this particular thing is uh, for a cylinder in, in that case, so the ground ground state uh, ground state energy is given by something which is non-zero, and you have E is equal to minus C over um, minus pi over twelve C plus C bar. This is the negative. I mean, uh, Casimir energy that you have on a cylinder. For if you if you have a free scalar for which C equal to C bar equal to one this just boils down to e over two pi being equal to minus one over 12, okay? This is, uh, this is something that you may be uh, familiar with from your field theory lectures earlier. And I, I, I hope this helps uh, give you a little more perspective about what this ground state, ground state energy is. Usually we, we need to subtract out you know, subtract out infinities and so on and so forth. Here it's a very clean way of trying to get the same thing. Okay, so we will see that there are other interesting places where the central charge is going to arise. Uh, a few examples are, are the Weyl anomaly, the uh, Cardi formula and the C theorem. Uh, I was expecting to hear a little bit about the Weyl anomaly from you, but I think Shivam has um, moved on to something a little uh, different. Uh, so, is that is that right, Shivam? So you're not 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 speaking about the uh, wild anomaly anymore, right? Uh, yes, uh, I changed. Okay, right, right. So uh, maybe maybe uh, you know since uh, I don't think uh, anybody is speaking on the wild wild anomaly. At some some point of time, uh, we will get uh, we will we'll see that if if we could uh, have have a lecture on that, but I'm surely going to be saying something about this. Uh, I mean, uh, Cardi formula a little later in the course, and Omorto I I I hope is going to be saying something about the C uh, C theorem, so um, to get. Uh, a sort of preview on, of what, what is going to happen at the end of the course. I uh, ask you guys to join us tomorrow. So tomorrow our session for these you know short talks is going to be from 11. Uh, the, most of you guys didn't have any issues with, with, with that. There are no classes uh, which are clashing with it. And I need to sort of finish this up a little earlier than, than uh, our usual class hours. So uh, that, with that, I'm going to end the discussion for the day. I know I've gone a little over, but hopefully that's all right. So tomorrow I'll see you guys again. And I urge you, I mean, those of you who are also not, not uh, you know, uh, uh, getting marks in this course or anything, uh, if you are interested, please do, do I mean, join us to get an overview of the things that your, uh, your peers are actually doing for this course, it would be, uh, it would be good for them as well. So tomorrow's session starts at 11 and uh, it's going to be approximately five minutes per head to give you an introduction of what, uh, what you are, are going to be doing for the rest of the course on your uh, projects. So um, are there any questions regarding that, regarding what, what, you, uh, what you are supposed to do or um, any uh, questions regarding what? Yeah. Are we uh, supposed to do some, uh, some uh, I mean, something original, uh, like some, uh, uh, some uh, I mean, original calculation of our own or something like that? See, if you could do that, it would be really nice. But of course, uh, in the five minutes that you have, uh, Tomorrow, I'm not expecting anything, right? 
So, so okay. uh, at, at the end, end of the day, you would see that it's, I mean, original means that it will, you will, so a part of what you have to have to do, which is something that I wanted to actually try, try to give you a, a flavor of is in research, it's one of the things that you have to do is search and search again. So in a way that's research, but it's, it's very, very important to find out what you want to read from. So that, uh, so trying to find, uh, you know, uh, a, a reference of things. And if you are saying, I mean, original calculation, it has to be something that has not been done, right? It is, uh, so you have to first yeah. make sure that you have done, done things right. And then you have to make sure that nobody else has actually, I mean, done the same thing. So if you're new to the field and, 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 and especially in a short course like this, it's difficult to know that. So I will not be expecting something that is you know, entirely new from you guys. But if you could do that, I would be very, very happy. So yeah, so try and think of it, think of things, you know, read up things and, and you know, give us an idea of what, what you feel, what, what exactly the topic that you have, uh, I mean, you 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 wanted to speak on what 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 is that? What what does that entail uh, for the rest rest of the people? Remember that this is not a talk for just me. It's mainly a talk for the rest of the people who are actually uh, in the course. And I want it to be an interactive one in the sense that you know this should be helping them as well. Okay, it's I mean obviously going to be primarily for you, but. You know, you should be saying things in a way such that it's not only addressed to me, but it's addressed to the whole of the class. Okay. And Sir, uh, suppose, yeah. uh, suppose, for example, I choose a couple of interesting papers. Yes. And I say that I want to, I want to review them. Yes. And, uh, and see if I can uh, do something original uh, along the way. Will that be a good, I mean. Good enough. That, that would be wonderful. But all, all, all I'm saying is that, that uh, you know, uh, I mean, one also has to be a little pragmatic at the end of the day. It's a little hard, you know, in a time frame of about a month to actually come up with something, I mean, on your own. But yeah. if you can do that, or if you have another way of, you know, rederiving the same, same, same things, okay. or that, that, that would actually be really nice. Okay. And just, just make sure. So, I mean, another thing that I would urge all of you, uh, I, I mean, to do, I, I'm sure you, you, you guys all are like that, but just, just to be in, uh, in the clear, if you take something out of somewhere, just put, I mean, put a reference to that. Okay. So that's, that's, I mean, one more thing that I would want you guys to do. So, you know, if you have read, you know, five, five papers or eight papers or something like that, uh, and if you want to put something in your report or your presentation, which are from there, instead of trying to claim those as your own, try and just say that, you know, this is from here. If you think that there's something that you have done on your own without the help of, you know, paper A, B, or C, yeah, I mean, yeah you can also just say that, you know, this particular, this uh, particular derivation is my own. Or, uh, yeah, so that would also be nice, okay? So yeah, I mean, at the end of the day, what I'm saying is, you know, try and get a flavor of uh, research through this. This is an active, I mean, active area of, of research. There are lots of things happening as we speak as well. So, so you know, see, see, I mean, what you can do, have fun on the way. And if you're stuck, stuck somewhere, drop me an email. Yeah, yeah we, we would be able to speak about it as well. All right, so tomorrow, 11 o'clock then, I will uh, create, a, uh, create a Skype, I mean, what's not, not Skype, what is this again, Zoom. And with, uh, I mean, if, 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 if everybody agrees to this, I would also like to, I, I mean, actually uh, record the talks. Is, is that fine with, with everybody? Yes. Okay. Sir, uh, yeah. just one request, uh, please yeah. send the link, uh, I mean, at least two hours earlier. I, because I don't know, but because of some problem, uh, the mails are arriving, I don't know. 
an hour yeah, later. Sure, 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 sure. Absolutely, absolutely. So, so you know, what we can do is we can just have the same link as well. You know, so we could just have have this link. So okay. it's the same, same, same link, link these days. So, so it's just one link. So let's let's just uh, you know, just meet on the same same link just to make sure that my mails mails don't go off somewhere else. Okay. All right so then. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. The 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 one one that we use for the uh, classes nowadays. It's it's just one link. So let's I mean let's just meet on that. I'll send yeah send the same thing around, but it's the same one. Okay. All right then, guys. So I'll stop sharing screen now, and I think I'm done. Okay. So see you guys at eleven o'clock uh, tomorrow. And um, bye for now.